Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Mnix Plays Path of Exile Breach League Hardcore. Last time around, we completed Act 1 and finished up the rest of our normal trials. Or I guess all of our normal trials since we had, haven't done a single one. And now I'm ready to go into the Spirens Plaza. First things first, when you go into the lab, um, for those of you who don't know what the lab is, you have to complete the lab in Normal, Cruel, and Merciless in order to receive... Your two ascendancy points. There are six in total, so you get two in normal, two in cruel, and two in merciless. The mer the laboratory is essentially, or is it called the eternal laboratory, aspirants laboratory? Um, but basically, it's it's just yeah, it's just a big maze um, that you have to get through, and then you fight this boss Azaro three times. There's a website called www.poelab.com. This gives you a map of where you should go in order to. Uh, clear the lab very quickly or the labyrinth um, and that's what I'm using right now so on my other screen I'm looking at like a map of which way to go in order to clear or in order to find the exit so we're just gonna run through this area very quickly there are traps in the labyrinth that you have to be very careful of um, as they will do a crazy amount of damage to you. Uh, they will cut you they will cut you up they will actually cut you so you gotta be careful there. Um, besides that, ow, like that. The freaking door had a trap in it. Okay, I went the wrong way it seems. Even though I had a map, I didn't know where to go. And yeah, and the only other thing you have to watch out for is, I guess the boss himself is Haro. He is very tanky and can do a substantial amount of damage if you're not careful. So those are the two things. Um, Actually, I'm really worried about how I'm supposed to take care of his uh, his traps. But we'll get there when we fight the boss. Because Totems doesn't really have specific targeting, it just hits whatever. So how am I supposed to kill like the fonts and stuff? I cannot do this yet. I'll put them right next to it. I guess, yeah. All right, so this is the first area. Next area. Let's keep going. So we are currently level 48. Zaro's Labyrinth is level 33. So that kind of just shows you. Um, I am extremely over leveled for this, but at the same time, you kind of need to be. Oh God. Because Izaro is actually a very hard boss to fight. I might be... You'll be okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna be fine. And I might be sort of overestimating how strong he is, but it is one of those places where you do want to be overleveled when you get there. Like, I might be exaggerating, but... He's tough. He is tough. Surprisingly tough, I guess. And really, we'll see how tough of a... It, it won't be tough for me, I don't think. Um, but we'll see how, how tanky he is... Uh, after the first stage. And that'll basically be our, our, our indicator... Of, uh, of how difficult the fights will be. Where do I... Okay, I'm in the third area. The halls. I need to go to the top left. So I guess I do need to go this way. Ah. Alright. Ah, I went the wrong way. Fuck. Okay, well, we got a key, I guess. So these silver keys will open up the silver doors, which will give you specific rewards. Uh, 
A key thing to have in the labyrinth actually is a lot of move speed because you have to be fast enough to avoid these traps. Um, so that's why, you know, once again, like, move speed is very key in this game. Very important. Here we go. The first trial. So when we get to the Aspirant's trial, Izara will have three, will have a certain trap. Uh, so there are three Izara phases. In the first phase, he's going to have a trap in, in these little locations. And depending on what the trap is, it's going to buff him in certain ways. So I think this trap, these are called the fonts and it gives, it applies a curse to us until we destroy it. Okay. And then another font shows up. And if you don't destroy these fonts in time, Izara will be permanently buffed with these, these curses uh, in the late game. So in stage 3, you could have like permanent triple curses on you. Um, and it's a risk reward thing. If you allow Izaro to keep these buffs, uh, he will give more rewards when he dies. Oh shit, I accidentally gave him a curse. Fuck! What curse is it? Vulnerability, I think. Oh shit, man. I couldn't help it. The, the Siege Ballista just killed him before I got a chance to kill everything else. Oh, okay, well... Yeah, he wasn't very strong. If if you're, I mean, it's not great, but if your siege ballistas are just melting him so fast, you don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Then. I mean, he's level thirty-three, right? Yeah, exactly. There's a big discrepancy between our levels, so it's only natural that he gets raped. Okay, so we have to get the golden key here. So a golden key is unavoidable. The golden doors cannot be opened unless you get a golden key. And you always need to get through a golden door at some point in time in the labyrinth, I believe. So... Uh, so let's get through this stupid trap. Ow. Ow! God, what's happening? Okay. We are through here. Maybe I leveled way too much before coming. Like, way too much. I could have done this earlier. But, I mean, it's a risk reward thing, right? Yeah, like you get it There's earlier. I, I wasn't super excited about reward. getting yeah. the first ascendancy, anyways, because it wasn't going to do anything for me. Except give me the a really one. cool, like, portrait. <laughs> I mean, those are. I, those, like th that portrait alone is worth it to get the ascendancy even if you get like zero ascendancy skills it doesn't matter i find that portrait to be awesome which ascendancy are you going uh chieftain right. so chieftain ascendancy allows me to leech for 1% of the damage my totems do. What? Yeah. No way. So, if I go Siege Ballista, they'll still leech for me, even though, you know, technically you can't leech from totems. That's so good. Yeah. What other, what other big bonuses are there? Uh, there's a 20% chance for them to taunt on hit. They have 50% okay. of my armor. And they reflect for 88% of their HP to everything around them when they get hit. So, so they, they have thorns, basically. Those are the big things. I think the life leech is the biggest one. Oh, and they're immune to fire damage, but I don't think that matters. It just basically makes you really tanky. 
And your totems get really tanky too. And then everything around your totem deals like 8% less damage and takes more damage. I think that's another ascendancy. That's it. Okay, so the golden door is over here somewhere. There we go. Is the most and the walkways. Okay. Um, which direction do we go? It doesn't say. The map doesn't say where to go. This map has betrayed me. Oh no. Okay, let's try going to the bottom. No, let's try going to the top. I don't want to deal with these Roombas though. I hate them so much. One of the biggest things you should learn in the Labyrinth is you just stay the fuck away from Roombas. They will annihilate you. Yep. Okay, I think this is the right way. Nope, this just takes me to a silver chest. Damn it. I'm not interested in that. There's a lever here. What did that do? Ow! There's a switch here. Damn it. Yo, they made uh, the spike traps like do more damage or something. They're really strong now. Huh? Or 20, they do 25% of your HP. Do they? Yeah. They hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I got the silver chest and I got another silver key. Which I don't need by the way, so why did I even do this? God, just get me out. Is this it? Oh, the trial. Thank you. When the time comes to strike, an emperor strikes oh, okay. He doesn't have uh, He doesn't have vulnerability. He has temporal chains. Uh, that's, that's not, not the worst. It could be worse. It could totally be worse. Right? Yeah. I agree with you. I gotta drag Azara away from the lieutenants so the siege ballista can kill it. It's not gonna happen. Azara's gonna get so buffed! Oh god. Please no. Rip. Azara's gonna be so buffed! I just realized this build is terrible at doing labyrinths. It can't kill any of like the... It, it can't, it just auto targets, and it auto targets a Zaro. Okay, this is a problem. So he has temporal chains, as well as added fire damage, as well as added cold damage. Um, and he's gonna get spike and dart traps. Okay, sure. We can do it. Sure. Sure. Good thing I over leveled now. Yeah, man. Yeah.
Okay. Where am I? I'm here. I went the wrong way. I need to go... Over here. There we go. Yes. And then the top right. Okay, well, I don't think Azaro is strong enough to one shot me. So if that's the case. Get this thing away from you. There we go. Movement speed. It's so key. That's why I'm dodging all these traps. Alright, last trial. I mean, we're going pretty quick. So now he has Temporal Chains. He has Fire Damage and Cold Damage. And he has Reflect. Alright. Fine. Reflect doesn't scare you. Yeah, or reflect, shouldn't scare you. Reflect is fine. Come at me, bro. Oh! Okay, there's a lot of stuff. I have to say. It doesn't help that there's temporal chains everywhere. Alright, one lieutenant down. Two lieutenants down. And... Izaro down. Got him. Got him. So Izaro drops a treasure key. And we can use this treasure key to open one of his many... Many chests. So I will pick... I only got one key for some reason. Even though... I guess you have to let him have all the bonuses in order to get additional keys. Okay. All the bone eye? All the bone eye. I cannot carry this. And he drops some loot. It's just a bunch of rares. So nothing nothing crazy. And we go to the divine font and he gives us a glove enchantment. So we take this and we apply it to the glove. And now we cast Word of Flames on hit. Word of Flames on hit. Releases a Nova of Fire around you, damaging nearby enemies. But I don't hit because my totems hit, so... Mm -hmm. That's a pretty useless one. More importantly, if we walk over to the Altar of Ascendancy, we can now pick yeah. one of the three Ascendancy classes. Hurrah. Yes. So we can either pick the Juggernaut, the Berserker, or the Chieftain. The Juggernaut is basically really tanky, has a very easy way of getting endurance charges, easy way of getting armor, and basically it's just like a really tanky melee character. The Berserker relies on taking damage to do more damage, so he has stuff like 10% increased damage taken, as well as 40% more damage dealt. Um, increase attack speed if you've been hit recently, increase movement speed if you haven't been hit recently, stuff like that. And the Chieftain 
A lot of his uh, skills rely on fire damage, so enemies near your totems deal 8% less damage. Enemies near your totems take 16% increased fire and physical damage. Uh, totems are immune to fire damage, they have 50% of your armor, they taunt on a hit, and they reflect 8% of their maximum life as fire damage to nearby enemies when hit. Um, Hinokor, that's Fury, 1% of fire damage leeches life, damage penetrates 10% fire resistance, and most importantly, 1% of damage dealt by your totems is leeched back to you as life. And you also gain 20% of physical damage as extra fire damage. This is probably the most important node in this whole ascendancy for a build. Um, so we, the first one we're going to get is the 15% chance to ignite and 15, 35% increased damage against burning enemies. It's not that good since we're not going to ignite, probably. Um, I guess we have Herald of Ash, so... There's going to be some fire damage there, but it's not going to be a lot, but whatever. Let's ascend to the Chieftain and take life regen and fire damage as well as a uh, chance to ignite and damage against burning enemies. Supply points. So there we go. We got a new little portrait. We look awesome. We are now a Chieftain. And uh, I mean, I, our damage shouldn't have increased all that much. Ask away. But it's just one step towards uh, our future build. So I'm excited for that. Congrats. Mm, thank you. Alright, so let's sell all this crap we At got. And what's the time? Let's see. We've been recording for 22 minutes, so we actually have around 15 more minutes of recording left. So I guess we'll try to go through a little bit of Act 2 as well. Flasks. Alright. Cruel, Act 2. Let's go get our passive point. And for those of you who are still unaware of what that means, if you uh, keep going into the Western Forest, there's a quest there that gives you a passive point. Okay, now let's start doing some real content, yeah? Act 2 Cruel. I wonder when they'll be removing Cruel. It shouldn't be that long now. Probably with the next big expansion yeah the next zone yeah they won't do it before then I think the next next thing is act 5 yeah is it I think so Ooh. isn't it that would be maybe not they haven't been teasing it That'd be pretty brilliant, though. You wake up next. Uh, yeah, you wake up one morning. Oh. It's like here's a teaser video for Act Five. Oh my god, I'd be so happy. But I'm sure, like next league, we're gonna get some big re like. A lot of things are gonna get rehauled. Whoa! Holy crap! Hmm. To run into a bleach. I ran into a big friggin' bleach, a lightning bleach. Okay. Wow! Yeah, those things are tough, man. They can get very oh. tough. The lightning, yeah, very quick. Oh. God. Okay. Okay, we're good. 
Got an elk. Got a fusing. Got a splinter. It seems that once you get into Cruel, they start activating more kinds of breaches. Like I heard that there's a chaos breach. There are five breaches actually. There's a there are the three elements, there's physical as well as chaos. So now, right now I think we are experiencing or we're encountering the physical breach more often. I'm assuming that's because we're now in cruel. That seems like a... That seems pretty logical, right? Yeah. Okay, another level. Uh we want the life over here and then we want to get those stun the stun cluster over there and then we can start working on our stun build oh yeah that I'm excited idea. nice all right western forest I'm going pretty quickly actually just blasting through act two Okay, okay, okay. Meow. I'm liking that uh, GGG stuck with their concept of having micro goals. Even in the breach, these splinters act as like micro goals. And the little hands. Yeah. It's like something to do every couple minutes. Instead of just waiting until you get into the late game and then having this one big thing, like a Siri, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh god. I wonder though, for new players, would it be completely overwhelming? Because they aren't sort of... I guess you're sort of spoon-fed? Like spoon yeah, it's it's pretty small, right? Like it starts off pretty easy and it gets harder and harder over time. Like it's a pretty good introduction, I think, of the game mechanics. Yeah. The only thing is like because we've gone through so many challenge leagues already, there are things that are in the game that are unexplained, right? Yeah. Like you see the prophecies, you you don't know what they are. You don't know how to get to the prophecy tab. Same with the atlas. Same with strong boxes. Strong boxes is a big thing. Nobody knows how strong boxes work unless somebody goes and explains them. Like here's a strong box, you click it to open it. Sure. But oh you can actually roll these strong boxes. There are actually unique strong boxes available. Like nobody knows that. It's like okay, I can roll strong boxes, but how come I can't roll essences, right? Yep. Well, and, and you sort of do, though, with the Corrupted Essences. Oh, I suppose, yeah. But I think that's not until a little bit later. Okay, let's get the passive point. Next one. So we're going to take this life node, go over here, get the stun cluster. After that, we are probably going to look at picking up these three nodes here for this drill socket. 
We're going to put Lion Ice Fall in here, and then we're going to get this cluster for damage. So that's going to give us everything we need, really. Damage, stun, um, and we can even pick up this cluster as well for a bit more stun duration and stun threshold. The radius of area skills really isn't going to do much for us, but uh, that's okay. Um, but yeah, after that... After that, our build is pretty much going to be online. The only thing we have to worry about then is damage. Uh, because on the tree, that'll be all the stun threshold nodes that we can possibly get. I I know that there are th stun threshold nodes over here with heavy draw, but that's just too far of an investment to get to. Like This is at least 20 points to walk over, so I'm not going to bother with that. But yeah, uh, let's see. It is currently 31 minutes. Let's finish off a Lyra and then we will call it an episode. Here we go. Talk to a Lyra. And kill Alira. I mean, there's re there really isn't any point in helping Alira since she doesn't benefit us at all. Like I kind of understand with Creighton and Oak, they give us either attack speed or physical damage. I might consider physical damage since at the end of the day. Or at the end of the day, like stun depends on damage as well. No Ooh, slower projectiles. That could be good. Which? Yeah, it's a pretty good, pretty good damage node. Yeah. And as far as the attack speed, though, there isn't really anything on the map that gives that much. Mm hmm. So. You mean the attack speed Creighton thing? Yeah. Travel. Yeah. Make it fast. I'll consider it. Anyways, that's the end of this episode. Um, we got our ascendancy. We are now a chieftain. The node really doesn't do too much for us. Except, you know, now we are two more points away from Hinokora. That's Fury. But, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the Cruel Labyrinth more than the normal one, obviously. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more updates in the future. Otherwise, keep in touch, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.